Alright guys, welcome back to more Persona 4 Arena, doing the story mode. Um, in the last video, we jumped into the TV. We've entered this world now, The and it's like the old high school that we went to. Uh, we fought Yosuke and Yukiko, and we just came across this girl, who apparently is the student council president, so... I don't know. Um, I mean, she definitely looks like she may be a, pers um, a character that was on one of the Personas. Um, I know on Persona Arena Otamax, it has characters from Persona 4 and Persona 3, so maybe she's from Persona 3. Have not played that game yet. I'm really hoping they come out with like some type of uh, port of that where they fix the AI because the AI in the original Persona 3, like the companion AI, you cannot um, you cannot control them, so they just do whatever and they're and they do dumb things. So. It'd be nice if they came out with a re-release of Persona 3, but anyways. Um, I'm not sure if she's in that game, but, uh, you know, she kind of looks like a character that would be, so. Apparently, she has, like, joined us now and wants to go to the announcement room, so. That's where we think Teddy and Risei are, or at least, um, whatever, the imposters that are using their appearance to uh, get us to fight each other I guess so anyways <laughs> a long intro let's go ahead and get it started well her eyes are filled with the fires of determination just as they had been when I first met her her sense of responsibility and her awareness of her duty say that she will never back down your little cousins in the announcement room and you're gonna go save her right I might not be as strong as the two of you but I'm no slouch in a fight wouldn't it be better if we went together? No, don't you understand? This world is... I know it's dangerous, but there's gotta be something only I can do to help. Hell, that aside, I can't leave after causing so much trouble. Making friends fight each other. I'm going on ahead. You don't want to waste time arguing, yeah? This president declares this in, in a voice that brooks no argument and takes off running. The writing sometimes is hard to read. Uh, yikes, I wasn't expecting her to behave rashly like this. I remember how fast she can run. If I'm going to go after her, I need to go at once or I'll lose her and not just stand here and, t and like <laughs> do an inner monologue. Please, you have to go after her. Yukiko sees me hesitant and knows exactly what to say. She's right. There's so much we don't understand, but there's no way the investigation team can let a victim run off to die. Yukiko ignores the fact that I'd be leaving her here all, all alone and tells me to follow a girl who she's only just met. This is the exact opposite of the behavior she'd been displaying before the fight. Now that is the Yukiko Amagi I know. Guess we're never leaving. <laughs> I'm ashamed that I have even slightly let myself be confused by the way I had heard her speak before and I answer her. Mm -hmm. I believe in you. Yukiko nods to me and I turn and begin running as fast as I can. I have to rely on the faint echoes of footsteps ahead to pursue Miss President through the school. I can't use my memories of the school in order to navigate because the, invis the invisible walls are everywhere, but the announcement room is upstairs. That obviously limits the paths that she can take. I will catch up with her no matter what. I've been running after Miss President for a while, but I still can't catch sight of her. She, she's so fast, it's almost supernatural. I even begin to think that her path may not be hindered by the invisible walls. Wait a second. Now that I think about it, she's not a participant in the P1 Grand Prix. She didn't appear in the introduction video, and even though she'd been there when I faced off with Yukiko, she wasn't affected by the rules. Could she be able to walk through the walls? If so, then catching up to her will be quite difficult. Just as I'm thinking this, suddenly a blue door appears in my path. I've seen this before. 
This is the entrance to the Velvet Room. I don't have time to deal with this, or so I think, but when I consider the timing of its appearance, I can't help but feel that there must be a reason for it. I make up my mind and reach for the door. As I walk through the door, I feel a slight sense of lightheadedness, and I close my eyes reflectively. When I open my eyes, I'm seated in my usual position, and Margaret is smiling quietly at me, as if nothing is different. It's hard to read for like five minutes straight. When she sees that I've noticed her, she speaks as if aware of my impatience. <laughs> you seem flustered, but time has no meaning here. Marguerite politely points this out, knowing that I'm in a hurry. The time is meaningless, huh? I thought I had figured out a few things about this room, but it seems that there is still more for me to learn about it. If time doesn't pass while I'm in this room, and I should concentrate on what she's about to tell me. Once again, as if reading my thoughts, Marguerite smiles. It seems you've emerged victorious and have come away with a piece of the truth. Though you are in a garden of deceit, you have the vision to go forward. Very impressive. Is that student council president's shadow really the cause of all this then? Who can say? All I know is that you are getting ever closer to the truth. There is one thing I can tell you. Marguerite's uh, golden eyes are fixed on me. If that girl's shadow is the cause of this misfortune, she will face her trial. But it's separate from your fate. You have your own trial to overcome. Keep that to heart. My own trial? I didn't mean to, but I repeat what Margaret said had just said. Everyone sees various things in you that draw them to you. Salvation. Hope. I myself find fascination in watching over you. Fate may not be the author of your trials, but you are destined to be tested. <laughs> Does anyone else get like, like there's like more to this than just like, you know, <laughs> normal stuff? Like, yeah, it's a little... It's a little weird, Margaret, that we're here alone in the Velvet Room. Just saying. Margaret smiles mischievously and nods towards me. Another slight feeling of lightheadedness passes, and I return to that otherworldly school. The blue door is nowhere to be found, as if it had never been there to begin with. I look up. I still don't understand what my own trial is supposed to be. But for some reason my mind has cleared up a bit. In any case, I need to keep chasing after Miss President. And now I immediately see a recognizable feature. Her long ponytail. I found her. Wait! It's too dangerous to go alone. Miss President turns around in response to my voice. She's smiling. I wasn't expecting that at all. Color me impressed that you managed to catch up to me so quick. This calmness. Had she expected that I would follow her? I'm beginning to feel like she's toying with me. But I understand now. Nothing I can say to her will change her mind. There's no helping it then. Promise me that you won't leave my side. And you can't do anything rash. If you can't agree to those terms, I'll have to force you into protective custody. This is a matter of life and death for you. Sure thing. Then let's get to that announcement room together. I thought that I'd be able to keep her in check by saying that her life was in danger, but she didn't seem to take any notice. She just shrugged and accepted my proposal. She's quite hard to deal with. I'm not sure if she knows how I'm feeling, but she speaks up. Hey, mind if I ask you something? What is it? There is a moment of silence. Just as I'm about to ask her to go on, Miss President continues. It's tough being forced to fight your friends, huh? <sighs> uh, oh, sorry. You don't gotta answer. She must still be thinking about my fight with Yukiko. 
True, I'm slightly hesitant to talk about any of this, but it's a question that must be answered. That's how it feels to me. No, you're right. If I could avoid it, I would. But I believe in my friends. You mean your friends won't hate you after the fight? Or you think they'll understand that you don't really want to fight? I don't know. Both, maybe. I mean, there's no way we'd fight each other without some kind of reason. Uh... Will she believe that answer? I study Miss President's face. But when she opens her mouth, she has an unexpectedly gloomy look in her eyes. What if you had to kill each other? <laughs> kill each other? I truly hadn't anticipated that question. I'm caught off guard by how I hadn't even considered it. It's true, there's no guarantee that this General Teddy won't suddenly decide to make us fight to the death on a whim. <laughs> Sorry, that was probably over the line. I don't know why I said that. I wouldn't let it happen. Even if I was forced into such a situation, I would never follow that order. That's all I can say right now. But after hearing my answer, Miss President cast her eyes down again. After seeing that behavior, I, how do I put this, felt a sense of, yeah, I don't even know that word, incongruity. Why could that be? Something doesn't feel like her. Could Miss President be carrying some unimaginable burden that she has yet to confide in us? Is it so heavy that she would ask that question of me? Speaking of which, if General Teddy does turn out to be her shadow, what does that mean about whatever repressed thoughts she truly has? Suddenly it seems that her courage and cheerful demeanor are a mirror image of that, and a slight sense of fear chills my spine. My thoughts race through my head while we walk down the hallway. What are you doing? <laughs> thought I broke my nose for a moment. It's that invisible wall again. Even though I should have been expecting them, I'd relax my guard and walked right into one. I hold my nose and wave away Miss President, who looks concerned. <sighs> There's an invisible wall. I don't think I can go through here. An invisible wall? Oh, that must have been why you broke out of the Mime Act every now and then. Well, if I can pass through, it must only be blocking the tournament fighters. This world sure is out there. Miss President walks right through the place I had bumped into. So that must be the case. As I had imagined, Miss President is unaffected by these walls. Is it because she's not one of the fighters in the Grand Prix? Of course, if General Teddy really is her shadow, maybe the normal rules don't apply to her. The entrance leading into the school building is ahead of us. But perhaps worst of all is that the wall I had just walked into is blocking me from reaching there. I'll just have to find some other way. No, there are walls there too. And the same can be said for the direction towards the entrance. A thought crosses my mind as I check back the way we had come. It's as I thought. Another invisible wall has formed where I just passed, and I can't go back. With walls in every direction, there's nowhere I can go. I'm trapped. And if I can't go anywhere, this can only mean one thing. Be careful. This probably means... The moment I call out to Miss President, General Teddy appears on the monitor in the entryway. It means my third round in the P1 Grand Prix is about to begin. <laughs> Is your snout okay, Sensei? Jeez, you're such a klutz! You're still using that form? It's getting old. Why don't you just show your true self? Boy, you got peevish! I don't have any idea what you're talking about! I was intentionally trying to rile him up, but he wasn't falling for it. Looks like I'm not going to get him to reveal anything that way. I quickly changed tactics. Okay. So who's my next opponent? Ooh, now you're getting into the spirit of things. Let me guess, you're starting to enjoy beating up your friends? 
The general doesn't pick up on my intention and loudly yells out what appears to be his pre-battle catchphrase. Smoke pours out, and who should appear from the smoke but the person I was expecting to see. Four of us entered the TV together. I've already fought against Yosuke and Yukiko. Then... That's what I thought. They're the last of us after all. <laughs> yeah. I had a feeling you'd be next, too. She ain't last along with me. For the moment, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with her. Words or actions. But I can't let my guard down around her. After all, I felt the same way when I encountered Yukiko, too. But as they say, the third time's the charm. I have to see if Chie's in her right mind. I decide that the best way to do that is to be calm and start a conversation with her. Chie, you know what they're doing, right? Before I can begin to explain, Chie cuts me yeah, off. Yeah, I know. The stuff we say gets twisted around so we end up fighting each other, right? Don't worry. You're the son of a bitch who left us as soon as the last case ended, but you're still our good friend. I mean, you have it easy. You're just fighting your friends. I had to keep killing you. Over and over, all because of you humans! Now this is obvious. Chie is clearly not herself. It's so blatant that her words don't offend me at all. Moreover, it's not just out of character, but Chie would never say anything like that. And you humans? That's as good as confessing that you're not human. Oh, right. Carnivore. Was it? Miss President is watching us from nearby. She looks more dumbfounded than worried. Still, what Chie said at the end caught my attention. I had to keep killing over and over. More stuff about killing, huh? Miss President was talking about it earlier, too. This must be. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. I'll give you a taste of the pain they put me through! She's not even trying to sound like Chie anymore. I can't even begin to understand what she's talking about. But if a shadow in is intentionally making people say these things, what does this mean about Miss President? Killing each other. All because of humans. What kind of secret past could the new student council president of the high school be harboring? No, now's not the time for this. I'll have to look into this after we've cleared up all the confusion between us. Let's do this, Chie. I ignore her words and draw my sword. Immediately Risei's voice echoes through the area as if she was waiting for us. Well, well, round three of the P1 Grand Prix already. Word on the street is that the carnivore may have a slight advantage. Will you, Senpai, all talk and no skill, manage to eke out a win this time? Let's get this show on the road! Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, closing it! Damn! 
I've won. I lower my sword and begin slowing my breathing. I don't believe I've injured Chie too badly. Considering this was my third time having to do this, I feel like I'm getting pretty good at not having to seriously wound people in a fight. Wipe that smug look off your face! This isn't fun at all! General Teddy has seen that the fights ended without any injuries and spits his words through the monitor. The image on the monitor then disappears without anything further. Let him say whatever he wants. I fought all the friends I came into the TV with, and none of them are hurt. All that's left is to head to the announcement room, and make sure Nanako is safe, and then we'll be able to go home. I walk over to Chie and help her off the ground. She's come back to her senses and she seems a little sheepish. Man, you're strong. I'm kind of shocked at how much of a difference there is between us. Look who's talking. <laughs> I've never been kicked around so badly in my life. I wait for Chie to reach her feet and then tell her everything that's happened to us to this point. So the others are safe too? Oh, what a relief. I was pretty worried. All right, sorry about the edit there. Uh, there was some light truck or something that was going by and had loud music, so I knew you would be able to hear it. So I just like waited the truck out, and like hopefully it's gone now. But uh, anyway, Chie is so relieved that she sits down on the floor once more. I can't help but smile at that reaction. She really does care about her friends. Yeah, these are the people I believe in. Seeing us exchanging smiles like nothing was wrong, this president sounds perplexed when she speaks up. You guys really are tight, aren't you? Makes me jealous. Well, we did spend a whole lot of time together last year because of that case. Sure, I was surprised to hear such weird stuff coming from him, but I know he'd never say any of that to me. Wait a sec. Who are you? Oh, I forgot about that. I quickly introduce Miss President and tell Chie that she may be a victim of this case. But Chie looks again at Miss President suspiciously. Huh? The student council president? Y you mean ours? That doesn't seem right. I remember the new president being a guy. What are you saying? I'm the student council president. Who else would I be? Mm, I'm pretty sure though. Maybe if you told me your name, I'd remember. My name... Miss President stops moving. What's going on? She can't tell us her name? That's not that strange a question, is it? But for some reason, Miss President seems unable to answer. I sense some kind of incoherent melancholy from her. Chie and I share a tense glance. I... My name's... What's wrong? Memories? No, I don't want to fight anymore. Why do we have to kill one another? Kill one another? I gasp when I hear the words fall from her mouth. I don't know what's crossing her mind right now, but she's definitely not acting normally. I glance at Chie, then try to approach Miss President in the hopes of calming her down. Without warning, Miss President begins flailing her arms as if trying to ward off demons that only she can see. Chie reaches out and touches her in concern. Miss President's arm catches Chie and easily knocks her aside. Chie! What power? I barely manage to catch Chie before she slams into the concrete wall. Still, this sudden breakdown, what in the world's happened to Miss President? Once I've helped Chie back to her feet, we carefully approach her from both sides. This will be a little rough, but it can't be helped. 
we can't ask her anything while she's like this. But at that moment... What? No way! Before I know it, Miss President is flying through the air. Okay. <laughs> she was jumping. For a moment, I can't comprehend what I'm seeing. This is no ordinary leap. She was at a standstill, but now her entire body is suddenly up higher than my head. Her jumping ability is unbelievable. She and I look up in astonishment as Miss President kicks off the ceiling to change directions and land at a full run. Wow, who is that girl? Did I say something to offend her? She did mention something about her memories. Come to think of it, her memories did seem a little muddled. Maybe she was on the verge of getting them back. What kind of memory would make her go nuts and run away like that? I can't answer Chie at all. What if you had to kill each other? I hear Miss President's sad voice in my head. Chie apparently wasn't expecting me to answer her, and she continues. I'll wait here. Make sure you rescue her, okay? Her voice is strong and confident. To drive the point home, she pokes my chest with her finger as if ordering me. Even though she might be in danger herself, she's still worrying about others. All my friends are like that. That makes me really happy right now. I ask Chie if she'll be alright on her own. She fires back, let me worry about that. I nod to her and begin running after Miss President once more. I will save her no matter what. Even though I was running as fast as I could, the invisible walls keep preventing me from making much headway. I attempted to strike against the walls with my persona, but nothing happened. So many invisible walls, one after another. This president can pass through them. I don't know if I can keep up the pursuit. The announcement room is still my destination. There's no way to know if that's where Miss President is headed as well. But if there's a shadow waiting for me there, I'll need to get there anyway. Teddy and Rise should be in the announcement room. And if Nanako is being held captive, that's where it should be, as well. I have to keep running, but yet another wall blocks the hallway. At first, I think that this is a dead end. I realize that I can cut through a classroom and come out on the other side of the wall. It's forcing me to enter the room rather than letting me go straight. This probably means I brace myself and put my hand on the door. The moment I step inside, a familiar voice echoes in my mind. Hi. Senpai! Can you hear me? Please answer me! That voice? Is that you, Rise? The real one? Her voice isn't coming from the PA system. I'm actually hearing her in my head. This has to be the work of Risei's persona. Thank goodness. I've been all alone since that weird fake Teddy captured me. And then you were all fighting each other. I can hear the relief in her voice. She sounds so different from the insensitive and rude voice that had been coming from the PA system. This is indeed the Risei I know. Where are you now, Risei? Can you locate where I am? I'm sorry, I don't think there's time. I'm stuck in the announcement room. Please, Senpai, you have to hurry. If you don't, he'll... Rise! What's wrong, Rise? There's no answer. The communication has been cut off. Has something happened in the announcement room? My heart begins racing. The enemy made us fight each other as participants in this tournament, but they had captured Rise as well. It's clear to me that they must have been worried about her, using her persona's powers to tell us the truth, but that's not important right now. If she was just captured to prevent her from contacting us, then the enemy must think of Rise as being less valuable than those who had to fight. She sounded okay, but who knows what might happen to her now. I have to hurry. Pardon me for interrupting while you are lost in thought. <laughs> A hand brushes my shoulder, and surprise I jump away and draw my sword. I can't believe that I let myself get so lost in thought that I didn't notice someone until they touched me. This is the second time I've let myself get so distracted. 
I've gotten used to having my friends with me while we investigated last year. I can't pay attention to the entire world on my own. I need to brace myself. I look up and see another unfamiliar face. A girl with blonde hair and striking blue eyes. Wait, a girl? Her face and voice seem human-like, but the rest of her, there's metal everywhere and all over her body. Yeah, I think she's in Persona 3. I think she's like uh, similar to the Rise, uh, the Rise girl, and um, I'm blanking on the uh, hacking girl, the computer girl in Persona 5, but yeah, they're all kind of like the same character. For a moment, I wonder if this is just an elaborate costume, but I can see the interior framework of her body where her joints connect. I didn't mean to startle you. You're, um. It's nice to meet you. My name is Igis. And no, I am not human. You are the one from the introduction video, listed as the sister complex kingpin of steel, Narukami-san, correct? The question catches me off guard. I wasn't expecting a complete stranger to call me that. And did she say she wasn't human? It's, well, when Yusuke called me that by that stupid title, I knew it was a joke. But when a stranger says it, it sounds like they truly believe it. Huh. This is a pain. <sighs> Nanako is important to me, but calling it a complex is stretching things. No, wait a second. I was trying to play it off. But I end up blurting out Nanako's name anyway. Calm down. <laughs> I need to take this conversation away from this subject. I clear my throat and try to start over. Igasan, was it? Why are you here? Our primary objective is the destruction of shadows, but we have come to this world on a different mission. The destruction of shadows? She fights shadows, but how can she do that if. And does that mean. Yes. I have a persona as well. Though my body is a machine, personas are the strength of the heart after all. Just as I thought. I'm surprised to find another persona user outside of my group of friends and a robot on top of that. I can't come to grips with all of this. From the way we were talking, she seems just like a normal person only in an, an interesting suit. True, I've seen stories in the news about robots looking uncannily like real humans, but isn't something like this far beyond those? Still, I can't help but believe the evidence of my own eyes. I mean, I've been hopping in and out of TVs for the past year. Who am I to say what's strange or not? Perhaps the technology behind her creation has supernatural roots of its own. I find myself growing more and more interested in how she came to be here, but I have to put that aside for now. There's something I need to find out from her first. This P1 Grand Prix, it's so similar to the events of last year, but to, the, but to think that it would involve someone like her. I don't have a clear picture of everything that's happening. That's for sure. I call myself, then ask her what I feel would tell me what she's doing in this world. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and what is this mission of yours? She opens her mouth to respond, but just then... The monitor inside the classroom turns on. It's at that moment that I suddenly remember. It's likely that I'm going to have to fight here. I've forgotten all about sensing that when I entered the room. Aha! So that's where you got to, Sensei! I've been looking all over for you! Ooh, who's the honey? You in the middle of trying to score with her? As if you didn't know, you're the one who lured us both here. Oh my, did you figure it out? I didn't have a choice after those guys decided on their own to horn in on the fun. You're a bright boy, Sensei. You know what's coming next, don't you? The general on the monitor gives me a twisted smile. Could Aegis' son's <laughs> mission be something that would cause him trouble? I can't figure out what his motives are, but he's using us to crush each other. In other words, she's the next challenger that's being set against me. 
Aegis seems to understand this as well, and is staring at the monitor with a quiet animosity. Sorry about this. Do you know the rule of this tournament? Only the victor of each match may move on. Yes? I have nothing against you, but I'm in a hurry for my own reasons. Neither of us, in other words, can back down. Then there should be no hard feelings. Aegis is refreshingly straightforward about this. She immediately takes a fighting stance. A better thought comes to me. It's tough being forced to fight with friends, but for some reason having to hurt someone that I don't even know is tougher. Another thought comes on the heels of that one. I don't know this girl. Perhaps her appearance here means that there are urgent problems that an ordinary student like me can't fandom. What gives me the right to stop her on her mission? Shouldn't I know what's at stake before I take that from her? Thankfully, it seems that she hasn't gone mad like my other friends. Perhaps the enemy doesn't care about clouding the minds of people who don't know each other. If we're still capable of understanding each other, then we should talk this over before we do anything. That will not do. We will speak more of this after one of us wins. Aegis says this so quickly, it's as if she's reading my mind. For a moment, I'm struck by how she could have known what I was thinking, but I realize that she's right. What good would it do for us to talk things over? True, the loser cannot leave this room, but until we have a battle, neither one of us is going anywhere. It doesn't really matter if we can come to an understanding or not. Until we have our fight, none of our goals are going to be accomplished. If that's the case, then it's better if we don't hear, hear each other's problems before we fight. That could be why Aegis hasn't told me anything. This must be her version of kindness. I silently ready my sword. Aegis appears to smile slightly when I do. Right, I'm not going to give up on what I'm fighting for, either. I need Nanako and my friends to be safe. And I have to make sure that Miss President is okay. I will use everything I can to protect them. To thank her for her consideration, I make it a point to announce that I'm ready to start the fight. And here goes. There's no need to hold back. Indeed. Let us do battle. She was gonna be the first hit at me. Heavy damage! Athena or Emo Cox! No! No escape! No! Light damage! Bramble mode! Bramble! Bramble! Severe! Quick die! Severe light damage! Severe impact! Severe impact! Severe impact! Steel zone! Ready! Light damage! Strike! Right now! Damage! Severe impact! Uh, uh, no! <laughs> Wowza! Now that's the sensei I know! That hunk of junk was no match for you! <laughs> Serves you right! Keep suffering! Friend against friend, beating the heck out of each other. A machine with the power of a persona. She was made to fight shadows, but I had no idea what she was capable of. I feel like my mind's been drained, even more than my body. It angers me to see that the general is watching over us with an expression of joy as if we were some performers for his amusement. I look up and glare at the monitor. I don't know why you're making us fight, but it's pointless. We aren't fighting because we hate each other. The reason we can fight is because we respect and trust each other. A low growl. That's the only sound I hear. 
The real Teddy's never made such a hateful sound. It's actually rather scary. Stupid! You're such a dumbass! What's with you? The image on the monitor distorts along with that outburst. The general is having trouble remembering to act as someone else, and his face bulges and ripples disturbingly as his hate pours through the screen. Any pretense at copying the adorable stupidity of the real Teddy is now gone. I notice that the voice spitting out these hateful words is not Teddy's either. Respect? Trust? So what if you don't hate each other? You're not like me! I was forced to fight against my will! I destroyed them with my own hands! You should all have to go through the hell I suffered! See how it feels to destroy everyone you call a friend! If I knew this was gonna happen, I would have made the rules so you had to kill your opponent to move on! The general on the monitor continues to rage. What are you talking about? Why did you set this tournament up? The moment I say that, I feel that all the dots have been connected. When Miss President had asked out of the blue if we were going to be forced to kill each other, that ominous muttering of killing one another, were these both something that had come directly from her past? Maybe she had been forced to fight against people she didn't want to fight. Had she been forced to destroy something that was precious to her? There's no way to know for sure, but it's possible. Considering this, it kind of explains why her shadow would have created a tournament like this. That is, she wanted us to feel what she went through. I might not be entirely correct, but I feel like I'm close to the truth. Should I just ask General Teddy about my suspicions? But as I'm considering raising my voice... Pardon my eccentric entrance. What? Someone comes crashing through the ceiling. What in the world? <laughs> I rush over to Agus to protect her from the falling debris. I will. When I look up, I see a young woman emerge from the cloud of dust. While not as strange as Aegis, she seems a little uncommon as well. But even besides that, why did she have to come through the ceiling? This room has doors. It makes no sense at all. I had been about to get to the heart of the matter with General Teddy, but the monitor in this room had been destroyed, along with the ceiling. Though she seems oblivious to my confusion, the girl cocks her head and apologizes again. Please excuse me. I didn't have the faintest idea that someone would be here. Faintest? Fame? Fiend? Something along those lines at any rate. What the hell is she talking about? <laughs> Who in the world is this person? Hmm, wait a second. That blue suit she's wearing, it looks familiar. And with that silver hair and golden eyes. Could it be? Are you from the Velvet Room? My, is this what's known as being hit on? A forbidden ritual where one human approaches another based solely on appearance and bets on the inner self being equally attractive. What? No, I'm not hitting on you. You just remind me of someone I know. Okay, so that actually sounded like I was really hitting on her. No, I need to stop thinking about that. In any case, I need to ask her something. Do you happen to know anyone by the name of Margaret? Margaret? When she repeats the name, her face seems surprising, surprisingly youthful. I'd been taken aback by her bizarre speech and accents, but could this girl be younger than me? Her profile simultaneously evokes images of a pondering philosopher and an innocent girl. I can't figure out how exactly to speak to her. Should I be more polite? I guess that doesn't matter too much. Anyway, worrying about the niceties isn't the most important thing right now. Oh, actually, we should introduce ourselves first. I'm Yu Narukami. 
Ah, that had slipped my mind also. My name is Elizabeth. Dear me, to hear that name brought with memories in such a mundane, remote place. She thinks of this world as a mundane place. That's confusing. Yasunaba Inaba may be out in the countryside, but I don't think it's as bad as people say it is. The girl Elizabeth suddenly bows elegantly to me. Margaret is indeed my sister's name. Can I take that to mean that you are another guest of that room? I see. So she's Margaret's sister. That would explain why she reminds me of her. Elizabeth son, huh? Well, I guess that's the case. It's true that there was a time when I visited that room. Igor, Margaret, and now Elizabeth. It seems there are more people who call that place home than I thought. I think I'm glad I met Margaret last year instead of this girl. But why is a resident of the Velvet Room here? Did Margaret send you with a message or something? I am currently utterly neglecting my duties. Is that so? That doesn't really tell me much, and I have no response anyway. So what possessed her to come blasting in through the ceiling? Instead of using the door, I decide not to bother asking her that. I've met so many different people over the last year, but trying to have a conversation with this girl is like trying to ride a wild horse. She's just going to ignore the direction I'm trying to steer us towards and just fear off whenever she wants. Let's just hold on and go along for the ride then. Maybe if I pay attention, she'll tell me something worth my time. Even if I try to ask her any questions, she'll likely just be confused anyway. Just as I'm having that thought, the girl seems to have noticed my hesitation and starts to talk about herself. Her eyes are lit up with a sincere passion. She really is a hard one to read. I have a certain desire. It may take a very long time for it to be realized. In order for my wish to be granted, I require a power much greater than what I have. The power of the wild card that changes bonds into strength. I have a feeling that the key lies there. Alright guys, <laughs> sorry to end the video here, but um, but I don't know where else to stop it, so... We'll end it here. We met this strange girl. Maybe we'll have to fight her, I don't know. But I guess we'll find out next time. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll continue with part four next time. Bye, guys.